Good morning. Good to see the, that you survived this week. There's been a very eventful week, hasn't it? A lot of things that might uh, cause us concern and so forth. And it uh, reminds us that where we've got to focus our attention is on God. We're alive to God, and that's, that's what matters most. So don't get distracted and upset by other stuff. Just put, your, put it all into the Lord's hands. The fo- that's the focus today. And may the Lord bless our worship. On January 6th, Wednesday this week, the church recalled the visit of the Magi who traveled from afar to worship the Christ child. Jesus was truly the Savior of the world, and is. The Magi were wise, powerful, and rich, but were not put off by their reception at Jerusalem, nor by the humble circumstances of the child's parents at Bethlehem. They offered Jesus gifts that were lavishly fit for a king. Hear now again the story of the Magi from Matthew chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child, and as soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, They went on their way, and the star they had seen, when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Let us pray. 
Praise to you, O Christ, light of the world. Thank you for revealing yourself to the Gentiles so that all could worship you. Lead us also to worship and to present our gifts to you. Amen. stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today we celebrate Jesus' baptism. It is fitting, therefore, to recall the meaning of baptism in this service. Friends of Christ, the Catechism teaches us that because we have been baptized, we should keep on drowning the old nature we were born with. Everything selfish and sinful in us has to die. This happens when day after day we are sorry for the wrong things we have done and ask God to forgive us. And the new nature God has given us in baptism should come to life day after day. We should live as new people who do what is right and good and live with God forever. Therefore, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Brothers and sisters in Christ, do you renounce the devil in all his works and all his ways? Yes. yes, I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, Father. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Do you intend to remain in this faith, firm in this faith, and reflect it in love to God and to your neighbor? Yes, yes I do. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you a new birth by water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His Spirit, so that you receive eternal life. Let us pray. Father in heaven, the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointing him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and be inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for today is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the Epistle to the Romans, chapter 6, beginning there at verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? We were therefore buried with Him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with Him in a death like His, we will certainly also be united with Him in a resurrection like His. For we know that our old self was crucified with Him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, and that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ... We believe that we will also live with Him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, He cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over Him. The death He died, He died to sin once for all. But the life He lives, He lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. And so, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit." At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Alive to God. The text is Romans chapter 6, verse 11. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Here ends the text. We must be cautious about whatever people in high places do and say. Remember, they're just human sinners like we are. And we, but we can also easily be deceived and become blind who are led by the blind. As believers in Christ, we need to keep our focus on the Lord and to practice what He tells us. However, there's something about the lives of those in high positions that draws our attention to them, whether or not that person desires our attention. Americans seem to be curious not only about what the President of the United States says and does, but also curious about the British royal family, the Roman Catholic Pope, and the heads of states of other nations. The kind of interest in people in high places was also true when Jesus was born. In the first section of this worship service, we read a scripture from Matthew chapter 2, which reported that Magi from the east, during the time of King Herod, wanted information about the one who was born King of the Jews, Jesus. One reason why people may be curious about the lives of kings and queens and other leaders is that people in powerful roles influence the lives of others. Apparently the Magi thought the one who was born King of the Jews would have an impact on the world and on them as well. This is most certainly true of Jesus. Jesus was not only human, born King of the Jews, He is also the Lord. And since He is Lord, He is in charge of all creation and has a great deal of influence over events, things, people, and over us. Who or what is a Lord? In the Greek language, the word is curious. It has a similar meaning to the Hebrew word Adonai, and that both of them are translated Lord. In olden days, the title Lord, when applied to a human being, represented a way of life different from the ones that we know. A Lord was someone who was the owner of a slave, like in an owner-slave relationship, or like the master in a master and servant relationship. To be the Lord identified one person as having a great deal of power over another. To us, Lord means God, the all-powerful creator of life and the owner of all. He has power over us. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Certainly, we would want to be curious about and to pay close attention to God, since He is the one who has begun our very lives and our lives depend on Him. In today's Gospel reading from Mark chapter 1, God the Father was paying attention to and was pleased with Jesus. Verses 9 and 10 of Mark 1 tell us, at that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming out of the water, He saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on Him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. God the Father was watching Jesus. He saw His baptism and he acknowledged Jesus to be his son, with whom he is well pleased. Now Jesus did not need to be baptized 
His choosing to be baptized demonstrated that his mission on earth was begun. He was now God's lamb, the lamb of God who was bringing redemption to the world. As Christians, we look to Jesus since we belong to and submit to him who is God's son and our Lord. Romans 14, verses 7 to 12 describe him. For none of us lives for ourselves alone. And none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. As it is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me and every tongue will will acknowledge God. So then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. So we belong to and are saved by Jesus Christ only. There is no other way. No humans can do that for us. 1 Corinthians 6.20 You are not your own, for you were bought at a price. So glorify God with your body. Christ is the Lord, and he rules over us in this world in which we now live. We also know from the Bible that he is also the Lord over another world. It was described after Jesus' arrest, Pilate was questioning him about his power and authority, and in John 18, 36, Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. Jesus, being God, was without sin, and he did not need to be baptized. His baptism was the beginning of the public part of his mission of redemption. And it teaches us to be baptized also and to remember our baptism. Our baptism is the beginning of our lives in Jesus' kingdom, God's kingdom. Life in his kingdom is God's to give, and it's only received by us by grace. Through baptism, we are received into God's kingdom and become citizens of his kingdom, even while we still live here on earth temporarily as citizens of this world. As believers in Christ, we are given life in two worlds, not only in this world, but also in the kingdom of God. And life is not our choice. It's a gift that's given to us. It's given to us by God's choice, God's grace, a favor received from God. We did not create, we did not earn, we did not seize life. As Christians, we understand that not only life, but all that we are and all that we have, we receive by God's grace and favor. As the Apostle Paul wrote, What do you have that you did not receive? That was in 1 Corinthians 4. However, all too many in our world disregard, disrespect, discount, and desecrate life in this world and in God's kingdom. Some consider the lives of others who do not seem valuable or agreeable to them to be disposable. These may include the unborn and wombs, people who are vulnerable, diseased, disabled, unable to work, elderly, needy, homeless, those who fled from dangerous countries. 
As a result of disrespect for life, our neighbors are hurt and harmed and eliminated by various means, abortion, physician-assisted suicide, euthanasia, neglect, persecution, racism. Life in God's kingdom is also discounted and treated with disregard and disrespect and with desecration. This is done with persecution, distortion of God's word, making fun of believers, and using religion as an excuse to dis disregard and distress others or to take advantage of them. Our world generally says it loves the gift of life, but it wants life to be on its terms, not on God's terms. Our lives from conception to birth are gifts of His grace. Our first birth is to be born physically. Our second birth comes through baptism into the Spirit, which gives life in God's kingdom. And it is also a gift of His grace. In the section of the Epistle to the Romans, in our focus today, the second reading, Paul explains the connections between the Lord both are gifts of life and of baptism and of salvation. In verse 3 and 4 he says, Don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Christ has freed us from being completely controlled by anyone or anything that is sinful. Verse 6 says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, so that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Through baptism, our sins are dead and buried with Christ. So verse 11 says, In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Jesus Christ. In Christ, we are alive to God and have been granted a new kind of life. We are to live differently from the kind of life that we would live without Christ. And we are to live differently from others in the world around us who do not resist sin. Jesus is our Lord and our Master. Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 2, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. In conclusion, our Adonai, our Kyrios, our Lord, has conquered the sinful spirit of this world sinful spirit that mitigates, reduces, and even destroys the lives of selected others. Since Jesus is the creator and originator of our lives on earth, and since he saves us from the world's sin and evil, he gives us new life and a new citizenship in God's kingdom. So we are, first of all, above anything, to be loyal to him. Colossians 3, verses 1 to 3 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life now is hidden in Christ in God. That means we are to be like dead to all that is not love of God and to all that is not love of our neighbor. Jesus is our Lord. We are in the kingdom of God. We are his representatives, his ambassadors, his stewards. We are disciples living as grace-filled stewards. Everything that we have is a gift from God, loaned to us to care for. And we are to praise God and to share love with others as we await Christ's return. All because... We are alive to God. 
And may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us now review uh, what we believe about baptism using some words from the small catechism on the blessings of baptism. What benefits does baptism give? Works forgiveness of sins. Acts 22, 16 says, Be baptized and wash your sins away. Rescues from death and the devil. St. Paul says in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 5, All of us who are baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. If we have been united with him in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. It gives eternal salvation. Titus 3, verses 5 to 7 declares, He saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Christ Jesus our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life does these things to all who believe this as the words and promises of God declare. Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Mark, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. The offering basket is at the door as it has been during this time. And let us now pray. You're re invited to respond with, uh, hear our prayer when I say, Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you have revealed your Son to us in the wondrous epiphany in the Jordan. So also you have revealed your name and blessings to us in holy baptism, declaring us your beloved heirs. Grant that we may daily die to sin and rise to newness of life, living with joy as your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve your holy church here and scattered throughout the world. Give steadfast faith to all Christians by the preaching of your word and through the holy sacraments. And send laborers into your harvest. Enliven the love of your saints to bear one another's burdens and to show mercy towards those outside the church. Quicken us in the hope of eternal life in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve the family, especially all Christian homes. Turn husband and wife toward one another in love. Equip fathers and mothers for their holy unity and duty as teachers of the faith. And preserve all children in the saving faith and certain promises of their baptism into life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation during this time of civil unrest and pandemic. May our government leaders and others who serve for the good of our people and for the protection do the right things. Protect all from harm. Grant peace and safety to the world, O Lord, for you alone fight for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give comfort and relief to those who are sick, depressed, tired, confused, or in any need, especially Margie Carver, Mary Davis, Cindy Edwards, Pastor and Judy Gremmel, Dylan Hetty, Carl Johnson, Nancy Laramore, Renee's friend, Sarah, and Lori Wilson. Watch over all expectant mothers and their children, that they may have a safe delivery and be brought also to the life-giving waters of holy baptism in, and in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with the family of Shirley Crocker, who died. 
Shirley was a stepdaughter of Ruth Ann Domke. And be with those who are near death, that they may hear your son's words of grace in their last hour, and be confident in their baptism, where you name them your child. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those celebrating anniversaries this week, we ask that you provide for all their needs. Baptisms, Reagan Williford and Julie Hensley. And birthday, Mandy Williford. Teach us along with them to be ever grateful for all your blessings and to show our gratitude with holy living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At your invitation, O Father, we come to your supper for rest. Preserve us from impenitence and unbelief. Cleanse us from our unrighteousness and clothe us with the righteousness purchased with your blood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you manifested yourself with the Holy Spirit in the fullness of grace at the baptism of your dear Son, and with your voice directed us to him who has borne our sins, that we might receive grace and the remission of sins. Keep us, we beseech you, in the true faith, since we have been baptized in accordance with your command and the example of your dear Son, we pray you to strengthen our faith by your Holy Spirit and lead us to everlasting life and salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God the Father show you the light of his glory in the face of his Son, so that you may be a light to the world. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace.